Welcome to this course on Introduction to Geotechnical Engineering. At the very first lecture of this course, today I'm going to focus on answering these three questions. Number one, what is geotechnical engineering? Number two, how is it different from other civil engineering disciplines? And number three, what will you learn in this course? To the first question, what is geotechnical engineering? Simply put, geotechnical engineering is the application of civil engineering to earthen materials. Specifically, in this course, we're going to focus on soils with the presence of water. In geotechnical engineering, we're going to deal with the physical and mechanical properties of soils and their relation to soil action in engineering problems. Uh, recently, the uh, Deep Foundations Institute has published an excellent video on what is a geotechnical field. In this video, you will hear from professionals working in this field and their perspective on geotechnical engineering. I highly recommend you check it out. To help you better understand what we will be learning in this course, I'm going to use a very simple hypothetical example where we have this 50 feet of normally consolidated clay Normally consolidated clay is usually soft and compressible material, and we will learn much more about it later in this course. And for the time being, we'll treat it just as a very soft material. And on this side, a multi-story building is to be constructed. So let's think about what are the possible challenges from the geotechnical engineering perspective. And there are a few uh, major concerns, possible concerns. Number one, since we're building on this soft clay site, settlement is a big problem. And there are different types of settlements such as uniform or differential settlement. And so we need to be able to estimate the settlement expected in this uh, site. Shear strength, which refers to the shear stress of soil at failure. When design a foundation, we need the knowledge of the shear strength of soil. And erosion, this relates to the adverse effect of groundwater flowing through soil. And in certain earthquake prone regions, liquefaction may be a big problem. And this is a more advanced topic and will be covered in graduate level courses. And given these possible challenges in geotechnical engineering, we are interested in the following properties of soil, compressibility, shear strength, permeability, index properties such as particle sizes and uh, plasticity, water content, specific gravity density, and so on. And all of these properties will be covered in this course. And the second question of today's lecture is, how is, it, how is this geotechnical engineering different from other civil engineering disciplines? And the answer to this question has to do with the materials we deal with which is soil. And compared to concrete and steel, soil has some unique and complex characteristics. First, soil is an heterogeneous material, meaning the compositions and properties of soil vary from location to location. Second, soil is anisotropic. Its mechanical be behavior and properties are directional dependent. Soil is also non-conservative, which means the behavior of soil is history dependent. And if you unload a soil, it's not going to rebound to its initial state. And finally, soil behavior is highly nonlinear. And in addition to these unique and complex characteristics of soil, what makes geotechnical field unique is that engineers deal with much greater uncertainty. In, as an example, suppose we are asked to perform subsurface explorations for two sites A and B, and for these two sites, standard penetration test samples at five foot interval spacing may provide a such level of details about the subsurface condition. If we use cone penetration test, 
which provide continuous data along depth, we could get more detailed information about the subsurface conditions. However, what's really down there is much more complex as shown by these two pictures on the slide. So in geotechnical engineering, oftentimes engineers must base their design on limited exploration data, and therefore they're dealing with much greater uncertainties. And finally, unlike any other civil engineering disciplines, once a geotechnical engineering project is completed, it's usually buried underground. Therefore, you generally don't see our best work. So these aspects make geotechnical engineering very, very unique compared to other disciplines. And the third question I want to answer for today's lecture is what you will be learning in this course. And this is basically the course objectives. On this slide, I have listed the main course objectives for this course, and the corresponding chapter numbers are also attached to each objective. By the end of this semester, or by the end of this course, we'll put a check mark on each one of these course objectives. And finally, I'd like to briefly go over a few advanced topics in geotechnical engineering, which will be covered in either senior or graduate level courses. The first one is soil liquefaction, which refers to the phenomenon that saturated soil behaves like liquid and loses its load bearing capacity due to rapid earthquake shaking. As shown in this picture, these apartment buildings were relatively intact structure-wise, but they fell due to liquefied soil underneath. And a more recent example of the detrimental effect of soil liquefaction is the 2010-2011 Christchurch earthquakes, where approximately half of the $30 billion losses were caused by liquefaction. And piles are traditionally used uh, as a foundation for structure supporting purposes, but recently innovative uses of piles have been proposed where, for instance, engineers use piles to extract and circulate geothermal energy which helps improve the building's energy efficiency. And perhaps surprising to many people, space is a geotechnical frontier as well. Geotechnical engineers are contributing to space exploration missions by studying the interaction of extraterrestrial soils with rovers and sampling tools, as well as how to utilize extraterrestrial soils for infrastructure purposes. And finally, I'll end this lecture with a quote from Richard Handy. Virtually every structure is supported by soil or rock. Those that aren't either fly, float, or fall over. <laughs>